Welcome to the 21st lecture on computational mathematics with CS Math. In previous lectures, we looked at finding derivatives and some of its applications. In next few lectures, we will look at dealing with integrals and its applications. So, suppose you have to find integration or integral of this kind. So, integral of cos x divided by square root of sin x plus 1 dx and integral of the same function from 0 to pi by 2. So, this is called indefinite integral, this is what is called definite integral. So, how does one find this in, in C's math? So, first you need to define the function. So, the function I am calling as f x which is equal to cos x upon square root 1 plus sin x and to find its integral indefinite integral you simply need to use f dot integrate or f dot integral with respect to the variable x you could also use f dot integral f dot integral that will also work with respect to x so both gives you the same answer now in case you want to find this second integral that is definite integral where the limit 0 to pi by 2 then you need to supply that limit uh, after x you say comma 0 comma pi by 2. So, this is definite integral of the same function uh, <coughs> with limit going from 0 to pi by 2. Okay. So, this is uh, 2 into square root 2 minus square uh, minus 2. If you want the numerical value you can just say dot n this will give you numerical value. Now, let us look at suppose we need to find integral of this function. So, this is the integrand and uh, so this is square root of x plus square root of x square plus 1 divided by x dx and it is definite integral between 0 to 1 and 1 to 2. So, this is a fairly complicated function if you try to do by hand it may take some efforts. Now, let us see how Sage finds this these uh, integrals. So, let me again define this function f x is equal to square root of x plus square root of 1 plus square root x divided by x and let us plot graph of this function. So, uh, this is the function f of x and its graph. So, uh, you can see here this graph uh, near 0 it goes to a very high value and when x increases this goes to close to 0 right that is what uh, uh, you can you can see from this graph, but however, let us look at what happens to this between 0 and 1. So, again at 0 since the behavior is uh, that it is going to increase to infinity. So, that is why you see this graph let me let me plot uh, may be between point 1 and 1 then it may be somewhat bet better here yeah, that is a that is the how the graph looks like between point 1 and 1. If I say what is graph between uh, 0 and uh, let us say 1 and 2 or 1 and let us say 20 this is this became 120. So, this is the graph. So, you can see here this goes to uh, very close to 0 right. So, uh, now suppose if you want to find integral of this function and uh, let us ask ask it to show what is the integral value uh, the says is able to find integral, but this integral is given in terms of gamma function and f 2 function etcetera. So, this seems uh, very complicated I am not sure whether you will be able to make sense out of this, but let us see suppose if I want to find out this integral between 1 and 2. So, this integral between 1 and 2, uh, so C is has an inbuilt function called numerical integral. So, this finds the integral numerically and this will give you value of the integral along with error. So, in this case you can see here this integral is 1.2369 and whereas, the error is 10 to the power minus 14. Whereas, same thing if you try to find out integral between uh, of the same function between 0 and 1, 0 and 1. So, uh, let us say uh, take the numerical value of this. So, this is not actually numerical integration, it is finding the numerical uh, integral and it is finding in terms of 
hypergeometric function and gamma function. So, this is what is called hypergeometric function. So, if I say uh, dot n, if I say dot n of this, this uh, may give me the numerical value whatever it has found. It takes time because this function is fairly complicated. So, this is 2.72269 whereas, if you apply numerical integral to the same function and between 0 and 1 and then see what is that you are getting uh, this. So, the integral is 69.98 whereas, from this we got 2.72 and this is 69.99 whereas, the error this is the error term which is quite high the one cannot accept this kind of error in case of numerical computation. So, uh, this is um, a very bad behavior in this case, uh, but what I am uh, trying to uh, tell you uh, with this example is that just do not believe um, whatever output that you get with any software. You should try to understand what is happening and then only you accept. Okay? So, it is very important to learn the concept and then use this kind of um, software to explore. Right. So, uh, yeah, so that is the this we have already done and uh, similarly if you try to find for example, integral of sin x by x between between let us say 0 to 1. So, it gives you the value uh, this is the integral and this is the uh, for example, uh, error term. So, that is quite uh, uh, all right. Uh, if you try to look at this integral sin x upon x this is actually a very very um, uh, important and uh, famous integral and this integral actually exist this is uh, one limit here is infinity such integrals are called uh, improper integral this one can find integral of this uh, sin x upon x with respect to x uh, from 0 to infinity o o means infinity or you can write i n f i n i t y infinity that also you can do. So, this is half into pi by 2 this is half pi by 2. So, uh, if you look at what is the value of uh, numerical value of uh, um, pi by 2 then this gives you 1.5707 right. Uh, whereas, if you try to find numerical integral using the same function between 0 to infinity. So, uh, numerical integral will uh, uh, when, when, when we want one wants to find the numerical integral one has to divide the interval in that case uh, the interval of infinite length will not be uh, very convenient. So, in that case uh, that is why you can see here when you integrate this now you are getting the answer uh, which is 1.90 whereas, this is the actually answer this is the correct answer which is pi by 2 and in this case of course, you can see here again the limit uh, the error, error term is very high 1.698 uh, almost qu quite close to 1.70 which is very high error. So, again when you want to compute numerical integral even with says uh, or that for that matter any other software of this kind you should be careful. Okay. So, now the question is uh, how does one find such an integral. For example, C is math how does it find this kind of integral. So, uh, let us try to understand when, when we say integral of a function in an interval a to b what it means is for example, let us say integral of this function we want to find out between let us say minus 2 to 2 then what one means is that you have to find the, the area between this curve and x axis. Uh, area below this curve uh, from minus 2 to 2 that uh, that's uh, actually that you have to say signed area because this this uh, side the uh, it will be negative so the integral can be negative whereas area is always positive quantity so therefore non negative quantity therefore you uh, signed area is nothing but the integral so that is what uh, uh, we we need to do right so if i look at the if i try to shade the, the this region this is what this area of this signed area of this you need to to find out okay so uh, for example here this will be area under this curve 
this will be negative of the area under this curve and when you add this to this should give you the integral of this function from minus 2 to 2. So, uh, from the knowledge uh, uh, of computing area uh, from a school you uh, know certain geometric figure and you, its area. So, for example, uh, the way one has to calculate the area under this curve is by splitting this into uh, area into some region whose area we know. So, for example, one of the thing we can do is we can try to approximate this area by means of a rectangle. So, uh, uh, for that what one can do is one can divide this uh, re domain from minus 2 to 2 in uh, equal parts let us say n equal parts and for each uh, part in each part try to draw a rectangle. So, for example, if I take um, between minus 2 and minus 1.5. So, this is the, the region. So, you can approximate that you can take the triangle by taking the, the left end point or from the right end point or the middle point or for that matter any point as a height of that um, rectangle. So, let us see what I mean by that. So, for example, let me let me look at. So, suppose uh, we divide this interval from minus 2 to 2 into let us say 10 uh, equal uh, sub intervals and approximate this area area under this by this rectangle which is uh, the height is taken as the left end point value of the left end point uh, everywhere the left end, uh, end point is the height of the rectangle and this is the, the width. So, if you try to uh, approximate the integral using these some of the area of this rectangle you will see that this portion, this portion, this portion, this portion these are the portions which are uh, left out whereas, this is extra calculated. So, you expect that to be that to have some error whereas, if you increase the number of the interval uh, which you are dividing at present we have taken 10 now suppose let me make it 30. So, when I make it 30 then the approximation will be much better because now you can see here this the left out portion and the extra portion calculated uh, extra portion which are considered are very small is very small. And if you take further uh, more number of uh, intervals or division let us say if I take 100 then uh, this will be very close to the actual area. So, that is one way to approximate this area. Uh, we can also use instead of uh, approximating area by taking the left end point as a height we can take right end point. So, for example, let me just do it for the 10 sub intervals right end point. Uh, so, for example, here this is the height here this is the the height the right end point this is the height here this is the height this is right end point. So, this is the height and so on. So, that is a uh, one calls this as right uh, Riemann sum and uh, you can also take midpoint for example, if I take r is equal to 0.5 then it will give you the, the rectangle which is uh, whose height is the, the value of the function at the midpoint of this each of this interval. So, this is what is called midpoint uh, Riemann sum. So, uh, and as you increase the number of the sub intervals number of points inside this sub interval then you will get actual close to the area right. So, uh, let us say uh, you can also in order to define this integral which is called Riemann integral. So, what we are doing we are approximating integral of f x from um, a to b by means of this sum of the area of this rectangle where f x star is a height and this is the width. Now, uh, width is if you are dividing the interval into n equal parts the width is b minus a by n and this is the, the height. So, this is the formula right. Now, in case of left lower end point left end point x k star is x k minus 1 and in case of right end point you have to take x k in case of mid point you take x k uh, plus x k minus 1 by 2. But in, in principle one can take uh, any point uh, in between and uh, do this calculation. Uh, generally. Uh, in case of Riemann integral one takes this this uh, x star one takes as the point at which the uh, minimum uh, occurs and also the points at which the maximum occurs these are called uh, lower Riemann sum and upper Riemann sum and then one has to take what is called infimum 
and um, uh, supremum and infimum of these two uh, sums. Okay. So, here x k is uh, a plus k into b minus a by n and k will take value 0 to n for example, k equal to 0 uh, if k equal to 0 you are at a if k is equal to n you are at b and so on. Right. So, uh, if you if you try to see what is the approximate area when you take the left end point and let us take uh, this uh, this division as 20 or let us say 20 divide this area uh, this interval into 12 equal parts then the value of the actual integral which is calculated using sage it is minus 4 whereas this um, approximate uh, area is minus 3.6 so as you increase when you increase this uh, uh, interval let us say make it 50 if you make it 50 then it will is minus 3.84 which is uh, somewhat closer to this and if you increase further let us say make it 100 then you will get much closer so the, in this case you you um, have this uh, a, a approximate area is approximate area is minus 3.92 whereas actually is minus 4.0 so and so on and you could do it with uh, left end point right end point so in this case uh, if i make r is equal to 1 this will use right end point Mm. So, this is the right end point you can see here the for if you take the right end point the area uh, approximate area is somewhat uh, more than the actual area little bit more right. So, this uh, this code you can uh, uh, for example, look at this is fairly simple what we are doing is we are taking a is equal this is the uh, uh, function a and b are the end points n is the number of intervals r decides whether you want to take left end point or right end point or midpoint. So, that is the so accordingly you uh, calculate the delta. So, delta is the, uh, the length of each of this interval and r delta is r times delta. So, it will if r is equal to 0 it will take the left end point if r is equal to 1 it will take uh, right end point if r is equal to 0.5 it will take the the midpoint and then uh, x k is the the po a, a k is stored in x k here a initially a x k is one, uh, a and then this is the set of all the points because you need to plot these rectangles. So, these uh, rectangles the way you need to uh, store these rectangles let me just first make it small interval let us say 10 the way you need to plot these rectangles is first you plot let us say this point then plot this point then plot this point then this point and then you again go to this point and then uh, uh, then uh, you, you go to uh, the, uh, the next point and uh, like this. So, you add all these rectangles vertices uh, together and then at the end you have to also add this end point here this uh, 2 comma 0 in this case and uh, then you plot this using what is called uh, polygon plot. So, using polygon plot you plot this and this is the graph of the function and then you are filling this uh, uh, graph under uh, 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 between the function and the x axis and here s is calculated as the, the Riemann sum. So, at each point you can see here s is equal to s plus y, y is the value of the, the function which is the height and then um, you, you uh, uh, keep on adding the height and then at the end s is multiplied by the the that width of each interval right so uh, you can also create uh, animation for this using using uh, in, uh, inter sage interact function you can also create uh, user defined function for let left riemann sum this is quite simple similarly for uh, right riemann sum and midpoint remand sum. So, if it is left remand sum you, you, you supply the value of the function f the end points a and b and the number of intervals and this is the delta and then you are uh, for each thing you are calculating the height and then ultimate uh, at the end you multiply by the, the length of each interval right. So, if you take uh, for example, x square the function f, uh, f of x equal to x square and uh, try to find this Riemann left Riemann sum this is 2.66 the integral of x square will be x cube by 3 
So, at uh, 0 to 2 that is uh, 8 by, uh, by 3 which is quite uh, close to 2.6666 right. Similarly, if you take the, the lower uh, right Riemann sum then you just need to define this as x plus delta into uh, i plus 1 and again you can call this uh, let us say instead of 2000 let me just have 200 points yeah so this is also very close to this similarly the mid point rule and you can call this function again let me call only with 200 points so that's the so this is mid lift mid point rule will be much closer uh, to the actual value right so uh, this is how you can approximate the integral uh, uh, from a to b of f x d x. Now, uh, but in actual practice in order to define the, the integral this I will skip because this is all you need to do is just put uh, add the rate interact and put all the codes that we have seen earlier this will create a animation where you can change the function you can change the a and b you can change the number of points all these things will be interactive. Right. Uh, the way one defines the Riemann integral as I said earlier is that instead of uh, uh, left and right end point you just take f of x t k star where t k star is the, the point at which the function has minimum uh, in the interval x k minus 1 to x k and uh, where you take a partition p, p is any partition of this interval a to b this should have been uh, x and to b just one second this should be b this is b. So, you take any uh, partition and then define what is called lower Riemann sum similarly instead of uh, t k star if you take the point where the maximum of the function occurs and this maximum and minimum will occur because we are assume, uh, considering f to be bounded for existence of integral we assume that f is bounded on the interval a b and uh, so you consider this u uh, l f p and u f p for each of this partition and take all such left Riemann sum and right Riemann sum uh, for all the pers possible partition set of all partition and then you define what is called supremum for l f one can show that these uh, su supremum exist uh, because this will be bounded above by b minus m uh, b minus a by um, uh, into the the um, the maximum value of the function in the interval a b and similarly this will be lower uh, bounded below so it will have supremum and uh, uh, l f p uh, uh, and u f p will have infimum so you find out the l infimum and supremum of these two in case these two supremum and infimum which were we are calling as l f and u f if they agree to each other they are the same then we say that f is Riemann integrable and the value of the Riemann integral is a to b f x d x that is the notation the Riemann integral this is how we denote right. So, this was uh, 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 given by Riemann that is why it is called Riemann integral and this uh, but the here problem is that to find this x t k t k star and uh, f x k star will be uh, somewhat tedious process, but in case the integral exists then you can divide this interval into uh, uh, let us say uh, n equal parts and you take n very large then the value of this Riemann um, uh, sum will be close to uh, actual integral. So, that is how one defines Riemann integral of a function right. Uh, next let us look at the fundamental theorem of integral calculus the integral which we find actually based on these two fundamental theorem. So, it says that in case the function is differentiable and uh, uh, at the same time f dash is integrable Riemann integrable then integral of f dash x dx you know, from a to b will be nothing but f b minus f a. So, that is how you find the integral. So, in order to find this integral you need uh, of a function you need to find the function whose derivative is the actual uh, uh, function and then you um, take the difference of the value function derivative of that fu uh, uh, function whose derivative is the integrand then you look at the difference. 
Similarly, if you define let us say if the function is integrable you define the integral of f t from a to x d x sorry it should be d t here mm, this uh, should be d t because that is the variable with respect to we are integrating. So, this is a function of x. So, what actually we are doing we are taking any any x and we are finding the area under this curve f t from a to x and one can show that this function f x uh, in uh, is uh, um, this function f x which is called anti derivative or indefinite integral of f this uh, uh, will be differentiable in case f is small f is continuous at x then capital F will be differentiable at x and not only that the derivative of derivative of f of capital capital f x is small f x. So, that is what is called second fundamental theorem of calculus. So, if you define this uh, indefinite integral of f take the derivative that is that is what you get capital f dash x is small x f x. So, this is called second fundamental theorem of integral calculus, this is called first fundamental theorem of integral calculus and uh, this uh, calculation of this Riemann integral is actually based on these two facts. right? So, let us uh, look at uh, small example, suppose I have a function f t is equal to t square and if I find the integral from t to x, I call this as capital F x and if I look at what is the the graph of this function capital F x along with the graph of a small uh, f x then this is how you see so, this is a red curve is graph of f x and the blue one is graph of um, derivative uh, graph of this indefinite uh, integral of a small f and you can see this is the uh, parabola x uh, the graph we have taken is f x equal to x square and this is you what you are getting is cubic. So, if I try to find the derivative if I try to find derivative of capital F x with respect to x you should get x square that is what you get right. Similarly, you can take another example this is somewhat more complicated f of x is equal to uh, f, uh, f of x is equal to x into e to the power 2 x and let us define this indefinite integral as g x from 1 to x and then find what is derivative of g at 1. So, this is again very simple. So, define t and x as variables, define g of x as de indefinite integral and then find the derivative of g. Let me call this as g 1 and evaluate g 1 at 1 which is e to the power 2. Right. So, that is a verification of this uh, um, fundamental theorem of integral calculus. Now, uh, suppose you need to define for example, integral of tan x square from 0 to 1. Okay. So, uh, again you you can find out this integral using integral, but in this case you, you see that this uh, does not give you the integral it simply returns whatever you have written. So, that means this integral uh, says is unable to find this integral in closed form. So, in that case what you can do is you can find the numerical integral. So, if you say uh, this n will not work. So, what it says is this is not callable. So, you can you, you need to find this as numerical integral in this case you will get the the value. So, if you in this case numerical integral is 0 0.3984 and with error of the order 10 power minus 15 right. So, many times uh, uh, if you have the definite integral it is may not uh, the says may not be able to find in closed form and uh, therefore, in that case you need to find numerical integral right. Uh, similarly, let us take another example. So, suppose you have function f t is equal to t minus t square and define this uh, anti derivative capital F x is equal to 0 to x f t d t and find the positive value of x such that capital F x starts decreasing that is the problem. So, it is quite uh, simple. So, first let us plot graph of the function f and graph of indefinite integral capital F x and then see what happens. So, this is the graph of the function uh, capital F and you can see here when it is decre uh, going to uh, capital F this is graph of um, capital F and uh, when does it start decreasing. So, you can see here this is the point when it starts decreasing and uh, so, let us let us look at uh, suppose we 
we plot also the graph of the function uh, this should be uh, let us plot this small f and capital F together so that we can compare. Right, let me put this in blue red color color equal to red right. So, the uh, the blue one is graph of the function and the the red one is graph of uh, indefinite integer capital F x. So, you can see here this uh, at this point uh, small f goes to negative. So, here the the uh, before that the uh, this indefinite integral that is area capital F x will will start increase will go on increasing. Whereas, the moment mo moment the function becomes negative then the capital F x will start decreasing. So, that is the that is the the point ok right. <coughs> so, here the point is uh, 1 point uh, 1 point uh, sorry not 1 point it is at 1 at 1 the fun the capital F x will start decreasing right ok. Uh, let me so, we, we, we saw that some integral does not have uh, closed form antiderivative in that case you need to find numerical integral. Similarly, if you try to find out for example, the integral of sin x square again this integral of sin x square uh, gives you something in terms of E r f that is called error function and this error function is defined as E r f x is equal to 2 upon square root pi integral from uh, of e to the power minus t square 0 to x square. Those who have done a bit of statistics would be aware about this function. So, this integral is given in this error form. Of course, you can find uh, what is integral of e to the power minus x square with, uh, with respect to x that is. Um, so, it will be error function times uh, square root pi uh, by 2. So, that this scaling factor is coming here and uh, if you want to find integral of such function. So, for example, integral of sin x upon x this gives you in terms of E i uh, of i of x again you can look at what is this E i function. So, many times the integral of some of the standard function is defined in in terms of some other function either error function or E i x. So, uh, these uh, you can find numerical values of these things for example, here in this case I can say um, dot n it is not giving uh, we have seen already uh, beca because this is the indefinite integral. So, dot n does it make sense whereas, if I put this limit 0 to for example, uh, infinity then this integral is pi by 2 right ok. So, uh, let me leave you some easy exercises uh, these are some easy exercises of, of, of computing definite and definite integrals along with uh, uh, some of them are quite uh, straightforward, some of them are not so straightforward when it comes to calculating by hand. And the last problem is that if you look at this sin of x square we saw that this integral is not in closed form, but you uh, just uh, find out left and remand uh, left and right remand sum we have already defined what is the function and tabulate this value between uh, for n is equal to 10, 20, 30, 50, 80, 100. This is just to demonstrate that this this integral will actually converge to the actual integral. So, okay. So, thank you very much. We will look at uh, some more examples in the next class.